It's an awful, awful tragedy. Richie Sunak reads the riot act after an Israel, Israeli airstrike kills three brave Brits delivering aid in Gaza. Plus, more Tory turmoil as ministers become embroiled in a bizarre row over whether homeless people could be arrested for smelling. And third time lucky, MLL star Amy Nuttall takes in her love rat husband, Andrew Buchan, again, this was after dumping him for breaking her seven rules. Join me on the panel tonight, Ed Vazia, Fear Hagen, Penny Smith and Esther Craig. But first, Rishi Sunak has warned Tel Aviv the situation in Gaza is becoming intolerable as he paid tribute to the three brave Brits killed in an Israeli drone strike. Speaking to The Sun's Harry Cole on the Nevermind the Ballots show, which airs after us tonight, the Prime Minister called for a thorough investigation. Yeah, it's an awful, awful tragedy to think that these were brave Brits who were actually risking their lives to bring aid to people in need in Gaza to have lost their lives in these circumstances is tragedy. My thoughts, obviously, with their family and their friends at this time. You know, I spoke to Prime Minister Netanyahu last night and was very clear with him that the situation is increasingly intolerable. And what we urgently need to see is a thorough, transparent investigation into what has happened, uh, but also a dramatic increase in the amount of aid getting into Gaza, removing the barriers, uh, but also closer work with aid agencies to make sure things like this don't happen again. John Chapman, James Kirby and James Henderson were killed along with four others while delivering aid for the charity World Central Kitchen in the Enclave. Netanyahu admitted the Israel Defence Forces were behind the attack but added the deaths were unintended, calling it a tragic event that happens in wartime. That's despite the charity insisting it had alerted Israeli military to the convoy's route with cars marked with their logo on the roof. The IDF's highest ranking officer has since been accused of delivering a groveling apology. I want to be very clear. The strike was not carried out with the intention of harming WCK aid workers. It was a mistake that followed a misidentification at night during a war in a very complex conditions. It shouldn't have happened. We are sorry for the unintentional harm to the members of WCK. We share in the grief of their families, as well as the entire World Central Kitchen organization from the bottom of our hearts. Well, the strike has triggered widespread international condemnation with Israel's staunch ally, the United States, being among the most vocal. Even President Joe Biden claimed Israel had not done enough to protect citizens. The family of one of the British victims, John Chapman, released a statement earlier saying he died trying to help people and was subject to an inhumane act. And I think one of the interesting debates that has been following this uh, fatal, uh, horrendous situation in Israel, and not for the first time the IDF have got it uh, awfully wrong, uh, but I think the big debate seems to be here, Ed, is whether this is, a, is this a tipping point? I mean, there's been lots of moments when just before Christmas, there were three Israeli hostages released that were, were killed. And, you know, it was said there that it was quite obvious. How could anybody have got it wrong? But they did. All is fair in love and war. Things do happen. It is complex. I get that. But this particular story does seem to have inflamed a lot of people who previously wouldn't have felt that way. Is this yeah, a, a game-changing It moment? does feel a bit like a tipping point. Look, um... You know, obviously, we should all, you know, it's horrific to think of these three British people. It really brings it home to you. Uh, the people who are working in Gaza to make things better for the people who live in Gaza. These are British people, British families. Uh, people we know will probably know them. Uh, so it's an incredibly awful situation. I had an aid worker from Save the Children on my Times Radio show yesterday talking about the conditions that aid workers are working in in Gaza. It is very tough. At the same time, and this is not meant to sound callous, you know, that was a genuine apology from the Israeli Defence Forces. It is a war situation. It is very, very dangerous, even if you're doing humanitarian work. And as you said, the Israelis even managed to kill their own hostages yeah. in, a, uh, in a wartime situation. The last thing they would have wanted to do, considering most of this war is predicated on getting the hostages back. It does, though, feel like a tipping point in terms of public opinion. The Brits sell 30 to 40 million pounds <laughs> worth of weapons. The Americans sell four 
billion dollars of weapons mm -hmm. to Israel and more because of the war. So if we stop selling arms to Israel, uh, it will be insignificant in terms of their war effort, but it will be a significant political decision. Whatever you think of the British government, Britain is respected around the world. A decision like this will be uncomfortable and difficult for Israel, and it does feel like that decision has come a step closer. I think it would be quite telling if the tipping point is these aid workers dying instead of the 30,000 uh, men, women, and predominantly young children that have been killed during this war. Now, I appreciate that this is a war zone and obviously mistakes do happen. However, this has become a pattern. There has been a pattern, particularly in this conflict, of the IDF killing unarmed, mainly men, civilians. And there are two reasons for that. The, the uh, Israeli chief of staff, the IDF chief of staff that you just saw apologizing there has actually said, publicly, this is not from me, that dis discipline amongst the forces is a big issue. You've had issues of, of ground soldiers coming back and saying that their commanders have been indiscriminately labeling certain zones mm -hmm. as, as conflict zones, active conflict zones. And so anyone who enters those zones must be shot. So in January, you had four Palestinian men who were shot. And the IDF said this was, they didn't do an investigation because they said they were in an active zone, even though they didn't justify it. The second thing is this organization called Kojat, which is the, basically the organization in Israel that's responsible for the movement of aid Convoys. Now, they've lost a lot of respect in Israel because they were seen as uh, facilitating Hamas getting, getting weaponry through before they could carry out the October 7th attacks. So the question is, why are they allowing this, this military intervention when one of the main resources that they use to actually uh, manage aid going in and out of Gaza, they don't trust? So if they're saying, if they're clearing certain convoys and saying this is for a medical emergency, let them through, but the IDF are not trusting them and so they're holding them at the crossing point in Rafah with critically ill people, if you don't trust your own resources, why are you carrying out this invention? This is not just an accident. This is a pattern, and it's actually indicative of a bigger problem in the IDF that they need to sort out. And also, there's the impact, of course, the impact on these um, aid workers, not just the British aid workers, uh, the Polish, the US, Canadian, all the, the countries that were represented by these seven aid workers that have died, the impact on their families, but the impact that this is going to have on the ground in Gaza. Now, at World Central Kitchen, we're responsible for providing 60% of the food aid that was going into Gaza up until this happened. Now, they've suspended operations and other aid agencies are following suit. So the impending um, famine that was coming, starvation, is now going to creep back in. It's not just the impact on these particular yeah, people, yeah. it's the wider impact that this act is going to have. If one organization that was providing 60% of the food in Gaza has suspended its operations and others are following suit, famine is now inevitable. Yeah. And also, you know, where's the end game on this as well? Oh, yeah, mm. there's you know, that. This, mm -hmm. this, is, this is the problem. What, what is the end game and where, where will it come? You know, the, the hostages, they're not getting released soon. Hamas, are know, they even alive? No one's asking allowed? this question. Uh, uh, and, and nobody and knows also, where they are. And, where and are no they? one knows where they are. Possibly even Hamas don't because, of course, they... they well, it's a slightly pointless thing to others. say, are they even alive? Well, 30,000 people have died. What's stopping them being part of it? Nobody... Israel is accountable. Mm. Israel is a democracy. We can have this debate. We couldn't yeah. have this debate about General Assad and Syria, where he killed yeah. hundreds of thousands of his own population. You can't have this debate about Iran, where they kill thousands of their own population to keep in power. The end game is to get rid of Hamas. And it's quite but clear this, the Israeli government what, will keep this, going this, this until well, national, international is, opinion uh, stops it. Okay. That's the end game. All, all I was going to say about the where is the end game is because the end game, where, where does the end game happen? Because of the fact that if they carry on taking out people and taking out people and then, the, the, and, and of course, food aid, who knows what's going to happen? And as Afia said, you know, starvation, rife. For each person who is left there, each Palestinian who is left there, do you really think they're going to say, mm. oh, yeah, no, I think Israel did a good job of tidying everything up? And you know? also, and also I you know, agree with you. I agree with you. Just that, is, that is the madness. This is the madness, exactly. the cycle of violence. The it is. How do you get out The comment yeah. is very pertinent because... If we're talking about endgame, are we saying that it's completely justified for Israel to continue what it's doing, even if they kill every single Palestinian in Gaza, so far as they get Hamas? It depends what your perspective is. Well, that's no, that answer is a no. It depends on what your perspective is. Because if this, if this no. had happened yeah, in Britain, exactly. if this had happened in Britain and you toured the streets of London, every Londoner would tell you, keep going. If you tour the streets of so Tel Aviv, if you tour well, the streets of Tel Aviv, every single Israeli will tell you, 
keep going until you eradicate so well, that. Well, you think that is the right policy, why are we talking yeah. about that is what hostages? they want to do. If the, if the, if the, if the goal here is to, 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 to eradicate Hamas, why are we talking about getting, uh, getting, rid of, getting back the hostages? It's just, not about the hostages. Just nuke Gaza, then. nuke the whole thing. Yeah. Because if the, the, the point is, Palestinian lives don't matter, you keep going until you've got, you've got rid of Hamas. If, if every single Palestinian in Gaza needs to die to do that, then just nuke the whole place and just... But of course you can't get rid of Hamas, can you? I mean, that's yeah. Well, that's exactly. Exactly. It's a yeah. perfectly valid you, you, take, you take down one... Two more pop up, yeah. and of course you've got Iran, yeah. you've got Hezbollah. Well, it's about all these other factors. Factors. Yes, and some people mm. think that if you cut off the head of the snake, is to, is to take out Iran. How you do that is a much more complex. Well, and yeah. that, I, I fear that is potentially where we. Well, that, but that, the that, point yeah, is, this is. A, I mean, you know, weirdly, I, I mean, I've been reading up about Northern Ireland because I had a brilliant Northern Irish journalist come on my uh, Times Radio show, and he published his memoirs, and it just reminds you this endless cycle of violence on a much mm, yes. lower scale, but still yeah. horrific. Mm. It, it's not until the leadership of both sides have the vision to see a route to peace that you're going to get anywhere. Yeah.